Every entrepreneur has a story. Welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur, where each episode, your host, Brian Carney, will share a drink with a successful business owner and have them discuss their unique journey, gaining insight on what it takes to be an entrepreneur and the different ways to get there. Brian isn't just a beer nerd. He's also the co-founder of Rivers Edge Advisors, a financial planning firm headquartered in Delaware, specializing in working with business owners. It's time to pour yourself a drink and enjoy a happy half hour with an entrepreneur. Hey everyone, welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur. I am your host, Brian Carney. My guests today, that's plural, are Lavelle Kosh and, see, I already messed up. I got nervous. Look at that. Let's start over. <clears throat> Got hey, it. everyone. Welcome to Happy Half Hour with an Entrepreneur. I'm your host, Brian Carney. My guests today are Lavelle Kosh and Rachel Shannon. They are an engaged couple who own a business together. They're both former college athletes that have now built a company called 3D Sports, a strength and conditioning business for athletes of all levels. Guys, welcome to the show. What's up, hey. Brian? Good to be here. I'm excited to talk us. to you. So this is uh, this is my first time in interviewing an engaged couple that runs a business together. So that's going to be pretty cool to, to tackle that side of it. So I'm excited. Glad to be your first. Yeah, exactly. Um, so for this episode, I'm going to be drinking a beer by, called Grove by a brewery in Raleigh, North Carolina called Brewery, brewery Bavana. So we will uh, give it a rating at the end of the show. Looks pretty interesting. Not too strong. It's a double IPA. That's 8%. What are you guys going to be sampling today? Go ahead, Lavelle. So sorry sorry to the listeners. I am a huge beer fan, but unfortunately, we have a, um, a couple of sessions later this afternoon. So <laughs> right now, I'm just drinking my favorite college collagen and vitamin c drink <laughs> that's perfect that's good yeah that... yeah How about you, Rachel? for me so i'm actually the sports nutritionist at 3nd so i had to go with a little mocktail action for some hydration but mine is coconut water with a splash of lime juice and cranberry juice and a little sprig of rosemary in there too so we got all bases covered that looks like a legit drink too that's cool yeah i love it um, well, they always talk about how you can't, uh, you can't drink and, and be in shape. You can't drink regularly and be in shape. So, uh, I'm making the choice to not be in shape, but that's my decision. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's t tell me a little bit about your company and what you guys do. Yeah. So our, um, company is three and D sports performance where a, and we're not new to the training, but we're new to the Delaware market. We train athletes in general population. From the athletes, we start from the middle school level all the way up into the professional level. We have um, several high school, college, and NBA and NFL athletes. And then we work with our adult population, which we call the infinite athlete. So we believe once you're an athlete, you're always an athlete. So we train the adults just like we do with our kids. And we believe that everyone should be able to be active and feel good after the workout. That's great. I love that term infinite athlete because I feel like once you get to a certain age, you still have competitive juices flowing and it's really difficult to figure out a way to channel those. So I love the idea that you guys are working with, with people basically for longevity purposes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's cool too. Cause we look at the whole picture, which I think is a little bit different with our style. So if someone walks through our door, you know, we got the bases covered with the functional training. You're taking your shoes off because we want to strengthen from the feet all the way on up through the body, work on that ankle mobility but we're also looking at things from the nutrition perspective. So that's where I come in as well as recovery. And especially for our, our adults, Lavelle likes to say the office injuries that people have. So yeah. if you got the tight wrists, you know, the poor posture, we're sprinkling that into each and every workout along yep. with all the fun stuff like the assault bike and sleds and things. <laughs> I think the assault bike might be my least favorite piece of equipment <laughs> uh, of the gym. 
You know, you the office injury is actually a really interesting thing. Well, for for those of you who aren't watching this on YouTube, I stand at a stand up desk probably literally ninety five percent of the time. The only time I ever really sit down is when I'm when I'm in a in a meeting. But this Zoom life, I've really been standing. Four or five years ago, I went to a physical therapist because my shoulders were all jacked up. And he said, well, tell me what you do all day. And I told him I sit at a computer a lot. And he goes, there's your problem. And, you know, we did a lot of exercises and strength and training to, to get the shoulders right. But he's like, you got to switch to a stand up desk. And, you know, it is crazy that, that I always hear the the joke that sitting is the new smoking. Um, yes. But those office injuries are, are for real. Oh, 100%. And just like smoking, it's a silent killer. You're like, oh, you know, my wrist isn't that bad. You know, yeah, but, but you've been typing literally hundreds of emails. <laughs> so it's not that one email. It's the 152 email yeah. that kills your wrist. It's like we do our athletes and I'll teach them landing mechanics and cutting mechanics and deceleration. And they'll be like, oh, you know, I made a wrong cut and I hurt myself. Like, no, you made 255 wrong cuts. And the that's, 256 was the one that one that that was the horse that you know that the straw that got the camel's back. That that's interesting. That makes a ton of sense, though. Um, well, how did you guys come up with the name of your business? That was Rachel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were having a, uh, the, a brainstorm session that lasted way too long, and <laughs> then, like anything, it just kind of the light bulb goes on. So. We came up with the name because we wanted to incorporate our backgrounds as, you know, former athletes, because that really helps us with the coaching. We're always speaking to the kids in terminology that they're going to understand. So um, the three in the name stands for me, because as a basketball player, you know, I like to, to light it up a little bit to get yep. those shots up. <laughs> <laughs> and on the flip side, Lavelle was the defensive stopper. So that's what he was known as. So we combined the name, kind of put a little bit of play on words that basketball players, athletes would relate to. And also just the saying of a three and D player in the NBA is somebody that is very strong and confident in their role. They put in the work, mm -hmm. they progress to get where they are. So that's the type of athlete, the type of person that we work best with and that we really get the best results with. That's awesome. Rachel's, Rachel's being very, very coy. She still has her high school three-point record at her school all, all these years. And she actually played overseas in Spain and Paris, professional basketball too. Oh, that's amazing. So, well, what's the record? How many, well, how many threes did you hit? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. We got to go look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Lavelle, how about you? What, so what was your athletic background? I know you're a two-sport athlete in college. What, what did you play? Yeah, so I went to high school with Christiana, played basketball there. I was only I was the captain of the state championship team back in the day. And then uh, I went to Goucher. I played basketball, ran track. And um, I just really loved being around sports. I did the coaching for a while. And it's a lot of politics. <laughs> you, yeah. you train someone's kid and they think they want their kid to play like this player and that's not really something that's for them. So then I got into train athletes and I realized really quickly that being a strength coach is really black and white. You lift the weight or you can't. <laughs> it's that sure. simple. So I love that aspect of it. I'm a very, you know, critical person. I like things very, you know, yes or no. And that's what strength condition was. So 15 years later, I just, you know, got the certification, the master degree, all that, you know, and and then I just full steam ahead and just been training athletes, you know, domestic and abroad ever since. That's great. I think that's a pretty fascinating part about, you know, being a strength and conditioning coach is it's really measurable. You can lift the weight or you can't. You couldn't do it three weeks ago, but you can do it now. Or your time got faster or you're, you can jump higher or whatever it might be. So, yeah, I think it's really a, a way to do those smart, measurable goals that you're able to, to really stay, stay on top of. Yeah, and we see that a lot with the athletes we work with. You know, we'll have a kid come in, their confidence is a little shaky, but yeah. – one month, two months in, they go from doing a pull up with like the thick purple band support. And then, you know, by month number two, they're knocking out a couple body weight ones and you just see a total transformation with their mindset. And yeah. it translates into their sport as well because they know, hey, I put in this amount of work and it 
paid off in this way. So that's, that's one of the best parts for me to really see the transformation with the kids. Yeah. I, I love that. I, I love that thinking that, you know, I think I had a tendency, I was an athlete. I played college baseball. Um, I had a tendency to play, to not lose. I was sort of afraid yeah. to make a mistake. And I feel like that confidence is such a key that if you can be completely confident in what's going on, that can really catapult you to the next level. And it's amazing that you guys, you know, take the time to focus on that and help help your athletes gain, gain that sort of perspective. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then the cool thing about being a strength coach is, as you mentioned, Brian, it's extremely measurable. So it's not, you know, oh, well, I think I'm doing the right play or what have you. Mm -hmm. If they're jumping higher, then it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. We recently did a six week vertical jump program and we had one kid gain five inches on his vertical in six weeks. Wow. And I was, I was shocked. You know, because you because you know you you're doing the right thing, you're giving the right exercises, but you don't really know sure. until it happens. And then yeah. we had one kid like, oh, little coastal bell, he would dunk the two hands. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he was smacking backboard, and his dad was like, yeah, I was surprised too. And I'm like, yeah, me too. And you know, it, it's it's a cool feeling when you're helping kids reach their goals and and being a part, a small part of their journey. Yeah. I, I love it. That That's great. And the one thing, you know, I think that's a really interesting part. I'd love to get your, your, both of your inputs on is I feel like sports specialization is happening earlier and earlier and earlier in kids, uh, in kids athletics. And I think it's a real, in my opinion, it's a, the kids are, it's a real disservice to the kids becoming athletes. Right. So what do you say and, and how often do you see that where, you know, a kid comes in and he's like, hey, I'm 10 years old and I'm just playing baseball for the rest of my life, for example. It, it, it happens all the time. I've been fortunate to work with, you know, several Division One and several, you know, high level players. And one of my guys I train, he plays for the Vikings. And I remember I was training him when he was 12 and he was playing basketball, lacrosse, football all year round. Yeah. And then he, he then he finally, you know, once he went D1 and, and, and one more so high school, he then moved towards football. He actually offered, he actually uh, committed to go to Michigan for lacrosse. And then he re he uh, decommitted and then went to UNC football. So it was just showing you like how much he loved doing two sports. And from a, a training standpoint, it's the worst thing you can do, Brian. The worst thing you can do is play a sport as a parent because you're t having the kids with the same exact, movement patterns over and over and over you know i get the simple example if you do something 100 times and something four times well eventually the thing that's 100 times is going to you know over overdo or it's going to overwork well that's your body if yeah I'm running or jumping or throwing one side literally no exaggeration hundreds of times yeah the body can only take so much jump so much push so much pulls yep it, that's, that's sort of like what you said earlier, you know, it's not the 200 and it's the, not the first time you you blew out your leg. It's the 256th time. And you sort of, that, that damage has to be cumulative on a certain body part, which is, you know, unfortunate for these young kids. What yeah. is, um, what, I, what's one of the, the mistakes that you see parents of athletes make while they're still frankly kids? Um, I, I think a couple. One, they push them to something that they're not good at because the parents want to live through their kids. Yeah. Um, we train one kid, and I won't say his name, but he's a very high level athlete. He just got offer to play um, to play at Syracuse and Miami and a bunch of other high level schools, and his dad has him going to a school that's not in Delaware. And I'm like, well, why? He's like, that's the best for his kid. He has to wake up early and do all the stuff, but it's the best for his kid, you know? Yeah. So I think sometimes as parents, we try to, you know, help the kids too much. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes you got to take a step back. And I think the worst thing you can do for your for your son or daughter is have them, you know, go too fast too early. You yeah. Know? Like back to the training, when we get an athlete, the first thing we do is teach them how to land. That's it. You hmm. land and you cut. Injuries happen when you're landing. I can jump and run a hundred times, but injuries happen when I'm cutting and landing. Yeah. So if I learn how to cut and land, then the injuries go down. I've been very fortunate in, in our, my coaching career. 15 years I've been training and I have zero ACL injuries under my belt, zero, zero Achilles. 
And I work with college the uh, uh, soccer girls. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm just a stickler for form and, and that kind of stuff. So I think sometimes parents just, just push their kids way too fast because they think, well, they go faster, they'll go quicker. I'm like, no, not necessarily. You know, yeah. slow and steady is how you get, get there the fastest. Yeah, I, I've always heard that analogy in, in some training circles. You go slow to go far. Um, you know, and, and I, I love that that saying. Um, yeah. Rachel, for let, let's talk to you about this. So building a business from the ground up with your fiance, how's that experience been? <laughs> it's you have to really love the person because it's 24-7, 365. You're having <laughs> just meetings at eight in the morning and then you're having them at eight at night. So, you know, you just got to grind it out and you have to really enjoy what you're doing, number one, and you have to really enjoy who you're doing it with. And yeah. I feel that Lavelle and myself, we complement each other really well because he just has, he's, he's the expert coach. He's got those years in the trenches of experience. Um, and he's out there on the floor coaching his heart out each and every day. Now for me, I come in and I'm going to balance it out a little bit more with some of the nutrition, the recovery, yeah. um, you know, just some of like the different business things, keeping track of things, creating systems, organization. We joke that I'm like the director of culture at the gym too, because I'm yeah. the one like, Hey, we should hang up this here, this here, this will get the kids excited. So I think we find a good balance where we're both using our strengths and we're trying to pick each other up with the weaknesses. That's great. I mean, that that's huge in any business and it's really huge in any marriage. So to be able to do that now, do you guys have any time when you're, you know, in your personal lives where you go, where you say, we're not talking about work at all. Do you have like scheduled times or is it just sort of like, there's a kind of a fine line between work and when you're not at work? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You're not supposed to turn on, turn it off. Yeah. I thought that, I thought that there was a total, uh, uh, on switch. I didn't know the switch goes off. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know the switch goes the opposite direction. I'm a little confused. No dimmer <laughs> either. Just all <laughs> full speed all the time. <laughs> That's, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little off every other Friday's our date night. So, so that's where we um, just try to turn off, you know, do bowling, typical stuff. It, it's, it's a little easier to turn off when you're off outside of the typical environment, you know. And then from a business side of things, we work in like health and fitness and wellness. So it's a little different than the typical, you know, uh, business where you kind of have to, you know, always be about the business in that sense. Yeah. We can have it in a way where like, you know, we're going for a walk and we're still incorporating health and fitness, but we're more so doing it on, a, on our pace. It's not like we got to work out every day or, you know, that kind of thing. And also from a business standpoint, we both come from, you know, different backgrounds. I come from a corporate background. So I, I get that uh, um, element and, and Rachel's family has a lot of, uh, you know, business savviness as well. So we're able to bounce off each other ideas. And, and I think we do a, a pretty good job of, well, not me. <laughs> Rachel does a good job of turning it off. I, I don't. I don't. I don't even know what a switch is. I'm yeah. just going. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a pretty common theme amongst the entrepreneurs that we talk to is that they can't turn their brains off. You know, I I have the problem where I can usually go to sleep, but I'll wake up at two o'clock in the morning and then I won't be able to go back to sleep because of all the thoughts that are going through my head. So I, I totally can appreciate that uh, that the, the switch not going off or dimming. There you go. You got to go for the brain dump journal method before bed. Just dump it all out. Ask yourself one question and then your subconscious starts to answer it while you're sleeping. I like that idea. I haven't, uh, I haven't, I've, I've never heard of that. So I'm going to have to take a look at that because it's definitely an issue for me. Um, yeah. So t talk about what you guys like to do uh, for fun. You know, uh, when you're not running your business together, what do you guys like to do? Uh, you can go away, Rachel. So I would say on our date nights, our bi-weekly date nights that we have on the calendar, we like to explore new restaurants in Wilmington. So yeah. we are very new to the area, so to speak, I would say. We've been here less than a year. Last June was when we opened the facility and moved all in one swoop. So we like to check out like Bardea is our favorite one. Sure. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> Place is yeah. incredible. Yeah. So yeah. we love that one. Really big on the food scene. Um, we do a lot of like active things. So we like to try new things even related to like wellness. So we'll go and do like 
float tanks or like different types of massages and things like that because we always like to stay up to date on the latest you know tools and technologies that are out there even that our athletes could benefit from so I, yeah. I don't know if that's separating things out but yeah, yeah. but I, for, I, I hear you guys like to travel a lot oh it's it's I was always want to say uh we've been forcing it so we lived in Europe for a year and a half and Rachel lived a little longer I came back home so yeah I was just in Spain last week week and a half ago I was in north of Spain set town called Vigo for a wedding one of my buddies who was a coach he uh he's up there and I was there for the wedding and and traveling is, is probably that has to be the answer you know um it's funny Rachel and I we've been to several different weddings in several different uh countries we went to a wedding from a friend of mine who lives in Tel Aviv uh Israel I went to a wedding in Poland oh, so cool. this this traveling yeah yeah I tell my athletes all the time if you're not traveling you, you're just missing out on a whole different part of life that you don't even realize that you need until you do it yeah you guys don't seem like the kind of people that would go on vacation and just sit for 10 days right I would imagine you're in mm -hmm. the woods you're hiking you're biking you're doing something is that fair to say yeah I think I think we're definitely big like exploring new culture people so like we went to Morocco we had like a, a local guy take us up to his village and like the Atlas Mountains that's like, so cool eat with his family like sitting on the floor with all their traditional foods so we really like to just see what's out there learn new things um we both speak Spanish from living in Spain so amazing um yeah we're super into adventures like that I love it. Well, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, your time in Europe, because <clears throat> we somehow have a listener in Belgium. And if the person who's listening in Belgium hears this, please send us an email. We want to send you some, some swag, right? We also have someone that's listened a handful of times in Spain. So tell me a little bit about your time there and what you did. I guess, Rachel, I'd love to hear a little bit about your experience playing professional basketball and where you were and what you did and how that experience was. And yeah, we'll go through your, your experience too. <clears throat> Once I wrapped up college basketball, the stars aligned and I went out to Madrid um, and I played for a team there and Lavelle went out to Madrid for an opportunity to be the head strength coach at an international tennis club. So oh, amazing. we were both living in Madrid, which is an awesome city to live in, you know, enjoying the food out there. Um, I had a good experience playing with my team. It's always interesting when your coach doesn't speak the same language as you. So there was a little bit of a barrier with that, but I have shout out to my one teammate that would always translate for me. <laughs> 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 um, and yeah, then my second season, I went back alone and I, once again, I hit the jackpot cause I was playing for a team in Barcelona. I actually played for FC Barcelona's women's Oh, team. cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So never made it to a game. Lavelle didn't either. We both regret it um, <laughs> back just for a soccer game. <laughs> yeah. You got to put that on the list for sure. Oh, it's yeah. worse. Yeah. So you're the, you're the strength and conditioning coach for a tennis program over there. Yeah. So I, I work with some tennis athletes. There's me being me and being a talker and, and networking. I went there for tennis and then i met a um, team and it's called Pozuelo, Spain, and I worked with their basketball team. And then I looked up, um, I think I found out about this program. It was either through a friend or online. And there was a football, like American football, not, you know, soccer, football uh, college combine in, uh, um, in Belgium, in Brussels. So I was contacting them, hey, you know, I'm an American strength coach. Yeah, you, you, you need anybody to help with the warm up, set up, run drills. And then, you know, obviously as an American over in Europe, you know, it's like commodities. Oh, please come over. So I went to Belgium for the weekend, trained some football players and some athletes. Amazing city. Like Brussels is, is like as big as Delaware. Very, yeah. very small city, but it's unbelievable. They are known for beer and Belgium chocolates. And it's as good as you, whatever you think it is, it's two times better. Really? Not, I mean, like, not even the fancy stuff. I went to the supermarket and got chocolates. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, this chocolate is amazing. <laughs> I brought it back to Rachel. And she's like, what was in this chocolate? Like, why didn't you bring me more? It was like <laughs> sea salt, milk chocolate, caramel, like the combination all together. Oh, it was just incredible. 
Yeah. 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 It was it, funny story, and I, we won't have time, but I'll give you a quick highlight. I got deported when I was in Europe. Oh. Yeah, because I over because when you're there, you do like a um a student work visa, but like my um my buddy ran the club. So he was like, you know, we're not going to do all the visa paperwork. I'm just going to pay you to train the kids. I'm like, okay, you know, not thinking anything of it. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, I should do the paperwork. I overstayed my tourist visa. And while I was there, I was going to take a little classes to help my Spanish, you know. Sure. I go to the, the office. They said, yeah, you need your, your visa in America. So then I had to go to Switzerland to, to leave the certain zone to reset the passport. Oh, As I'm man. leaving Switzerland, they stopped me at the gate take my passport they make me wait they didn't allow me to leave but then tell me that i'm banned from switzerland i go from switzerland to london while i'm in london i have to at the time i'm actually going to school online because i transferred had a test they're terrible on the test <laughs> i come back to a, to the spain they they hold me in the spanish jail they took it this is like a legit story that, i had to go to like not like a jail jail it was yeah, like an yeah. airport like like sure. going sell more or less they like asked you for like your belt, your shoes. It was pretty crazy. Holy and then I, I know it's. I still remember to this day. I called my uh, my mom and I was like, "Yeah, I think I need a ticket back to Spain because they took my phone." And uh, the last day of the sale, I was able to buy a ticket from London to New York for two hundred and thirty-five dollars. I still remember to this day. Amazing. It was the last day of the sale. The last <laughs> day. <laughs> the last day of the summer sale, and I go to New York. Two weeks later, I get my, my paperwork and I'm back over there. But uh, yeah, it, it, it was it holy was a crap. Crazy, that's a crazy story. That's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got deported for like two weeks more or less, <laughs> Man, a week and a half. It was more like a, a clerical thing. It was like, yeah, go home, take your paperwork, and then you know you're good to go. <laughs> yeah, I, I love that story. That's great. That sounds like totally <laughs> like you would see that in a movie and uh, with everything going wrong for someone. It, it, it was, yeah. My friends love to say that's their favorite story that didn't happen to them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. I love it. Um, Rachel, I'm going to ta tackle nutrition real quick because I feel like nutrition in the United States is so complicated, right? Uh, for the average person, there's all those diets. Do I eat paleo? Do I do no carb? Do I do vegan? Do I do intermittent fasting? The whole 30, like all of that stuff. And I think it's a, a I think it's a, uh, the saying that I have sitting over on my desk is complexity is the enemy of execution. And I think, I think that food has become overly complicated for people when they can't figure out what they should be eating. I know uh, they know a lot about what they shouldn't be eating, but what they should be eating. So talk a little bit about what you would, what's some advice for, you know, your regular people that are active to help them kind of cut through all the noise and, and, and tackle it simply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that quote too, that you have in your office there. I like to take, when I'm working with people, I like to take a habits-based approach. So I like to look from top to bottom, what are you currently doing? Because that means it's sustainable with you and your routine and your schedule and your kids and whatever's going on. And then we're gonna work from there step-by-step step to try to see if we can tweak and adjust things here or there to make the most impact right away. Because the quickest you see results, you start to gain some momentum, you're more likely to continue down the line to make more changes. So yeah. the simplest thing and the best advice I can give for people right off the bat, and this applies to both athletes and adults, is when it comes to hydration and not just like, hey, get that big gallon, keep it by your desk, make sure you're <laughs> chugging it down type of deal. But <laughs> I know, because I know you've heard it before. Yeah. We've all heard it before. We're like, yeah, it's so easy, but we still don't do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> is not only is the hydration important, but it's your mineral balance in your body. So if I am actually chugging down that whole huge gallon of water, I actually might be de dehydrating my body even further because I'm not getting back in the sodium, the potassium, the magnesium, mm -hmm. all of those trace minerals that your body needs to function properly. So it sounds a little weird, but I have convinced many athletes and many adults to do this. But to add a pinch of some high quality sea salt into the water you're drinking, especially when you're active, because it's going to allow your body, your cells to just actually take in, use and absorb the water that you're drinking. So it's something that's very simple. Most of us have sea salt laying around in the cabinet. Sure. Yeah. 
If not, it's a couple dollars at the grocery store on Amazon and it makes a big impact, especially if you're someone that gets overly sore from workouts or you're really crampy. Yeah. It makes a big difference right away. That high, that's interesting. Hydration. I actually, my wife and I have an ongoing joke and I just sent her a meme this morning. And the meme is this guy talking to his girlfriend saying, and she's saying, you know, I feel terrible. I have a headache. I had four cups of coffee, uh, three avocados, and I haven't had water at all. And I sent that to my wife. Cause she's always like, I don't feel right. I'm like, have you had any water today? And she's like, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You know, it, and we always talk about how, how she's probably not hydrated enough. So I'm I'm definitely gonna make her listen to that part. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and she won't have to drink as much either. That's the good part. If you have those minerals back in, you don't have to chug the huge uh, bottle. So yeah, that gallon is a little intimidating when you see people have that on their desk or carrying it around the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, so Lavelle, I got a question for you. So I love the idea of longevity. So I did. CrossFit, not at a competitive level, but I went like four or five times a week and I got really into it. And, you know, I was, you know, tried to do technique well, but it's hard on your body. Right. So uh, what I realized is that I was lifting too much weight too often. Right. And I'm not very strong. So that, that is a very uh, subjective (laughs) comment there. What would you tell people, especially, so I'm 42. So someone that's in their forties trying to stay fit, uh, and really what would, what would be some advice that you'd give them to be able to stay in shape and not get hurt? Well, first thing is listen to your body. You know, your body is like your car. You're driving your car and the light comes on. You're not going to just keep going. You're going to like, well, let me stop at this, at the, you know, the car shop and see what's going on under the hood. My engine yeah. light, my tire, whatever it may be. You're going to take notes that light. The same thing with your body. You have a shoulder, your shoulder bugging you is your engine light. It's telling you, hey, something's not right. What's going on? Don't just do a couple of circle, sh- sh- circle, uh, circles and call it a day. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> everyone does it. Oh, you know, I roll around. So, so two things: listen to your body, and then second, have a set warm up routine. Mm. That's it. It doesn't have to be complex. Doesn't have to be long. There's something that tells your body, I'm going to go from the I'm gonna go to the sympathetic. I'm gonna go from the pair to the sympathetic system. I'm gonna yeah. get my body ready to go and ready to go fast. You know, I do a very simple PVC warm up. I just yeah. do, you know, overhead squats, a couple external, internal rotations. Very simple. Also, what kind of shoes are you wearing? Yeah. You know, at our work, at our gym, we do about ninety percent barefoot training. Are oh, you familiar wow. with uh, barefoot training? Yes, I'm, I am a little bit, but definitely explain a little bit more about it. Yeah. So essentially, what it does is it helps strengthen the structural integrity of your feet and those intrinsic foot muscles. The feet are the foundation. So if I have a tight knee or hip, it could be those areas, or it's probably stemming from the feet. We often are standing on our feet too much. We're often wearing the wrong shoes. So what I have all my athletes and adults do is do a little soft tissue roll with a lacrosse ball. Uh. You just take a lacrosse ball, you put it on the ground, and you just do 30 rolls left, right, forward, and back. That's it, 30 rolls per foot. It's the cheapest thing you can do to help keep your body ready. You can, there's a little lacrosse ball. It's super light, take it anywhere, and that's part of their warm-up. This is the point now where athletes ask, can I take their shoes off? because it feels so good to take their shoes off. And then because the feet are the foundation, the rest of my body feels so much better, you know, and it just takes the the, the toll off. So yeah, the warm up and then the the shoes, if you, now obviously if you're working at the Y or what have you, it's a little tougher, (laughs) if, if, you know, but if, if the area, the atmosphere allows it, definitely try to do a set or two with no shoes on. That makes a world of difference. That's really interesting. So I have horrendously flat feet. Right. I always say I have Fred Flintstone feet and, you know, I'll do jump rope or I'll do like wall balls or something. And my feet will ache like crazy. So if I did some lacrosse work and went barefoot, that would probably help me. I'm I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Brian, it's amazing how and I have, like I said, huge basketball players, 6'10", 6'11", guys that are huge and long everywhere. And we do the lacrosse ball work and instantly they're like, my back feels a little better. I'm like, yeah, because you're actually starting from the bottom, working your way oh. up, you know? 
That's fascinating. Yeah, I'm telling you, the cross okay. ball is the way to do it. Everybody at 3 and D, they do the lacrosse ball. That's just part of our, our, our daily activation. We do that. And then if you're really, you know, trying to uh, hit a home run, do a couple uh, face pulls, band pull-aparts. Yeah. So two things I call the vegetables, face pulls and reverse sleds. You should do a face pull and a reverse sled every single day. It yeah. just helps, puts the, the shoulder in proper correction. And then the reverse sleds, it really uh, bring blood to the uh, to the knees. Um, I, I love CrossFit myself, but I'm a certified strength coach, so I know the proper form of technique. I, I'm I'm just not a big CrossFit fan for people who haven't had training. Sure, because they're you see bad stuff. Olympic, they're Olympic lifts for, for a reason. Yeah, they go to the Olympics and get medals for this stuff. Yeah. So like sometimes if you don't have the training. I'm a little worried about CrossFit. Now, obviously, if you have the training, I love CrossFit. Sure. But I would rather see people kind of slow, slow play their way into it. Yeah, and, and it's definitely gym dependent. You know, the, the gym I went to was yes. great, but I've been to other ones. And I'm like, oh, that's not good. You know, just watching people's form, <laughs> uh, you know. Um, so I have to ask you, since we're on the feet t- topic, I have two giant fears in my life. Number one, I'm petrified of jellyfish. Very odd, right? Oh. Number two. I am terrified to tear my Achilles. So it is, I'm like the prime age for, you know, you go play basketball on a Saturday morning with, you know, a bunch of other 40 year olds and then someone's popping their Achilles. Is there, are there any preventative measures I can take to prevent an Achilles pop? Would it be the feet thing? A hundred percent. I play basketball to this day. I tell all my guys I'm playing till I'm 60. That's my goal. And well, two things. One, you really want to change your shoes every six to seven months. That doesn't mean you have to buy new shoes. Sure. You can have two or three pairs of shoes, just rotate them out. You know, you know, and I'm 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 over the age of spending hundreds of dollars for shoes too. So you know, I like to get a good pair of shoes and then just switch them out, you know, periodically. That's the number one thing is shoes, you know, having a good uh, pair of shoes. And then also you know, the back to the warm up. Um, it's a little hard to explain, you know, via, you know, uh, in the, uh, via like, you know, camera. So, sure. but essentially you would do, uh, um, okay, so you would do an ankle stretch and I call it the gas pedal stretch. Uh-huh. So imagine you have your foot and you're like using the gas pedal. Yeah. That's a simple, simple stretch. Cause it, what it does is it puts your body in the movements that's going to be doing. So it's called a plantar flexion, pushing your foot up and dorsi, bringing your foot towards the knee. So all you're doing is playing the dorsi with a band, and you're simply doing gas pedals. By doing that, it really it really makes it easy to prepare the body. At the end of the day, you just want to prepare the body for what you're going to ask it to do. That's yeah. the easiest takeaway from that. Also, we use it called a slant board. Are you yeah. familiar with yeah, that? Yeah, I am, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's another thing. If you do a slant board, it's literally just put your foot on top of the slant board and just move your knee over the toe you can do that five ten times every day yeah and, and also i know i'm throwing a lot at you i know i'm taking <laughs> notes actually is, i love it okay perfect <laughs> yeah we do uh a lot of minimum dosage stuff so like everything we do is literally five to ten reps we don't believe in doing 100 because you're going to stop at 30 sure so but everybody can do five or ten anything yep. you know i have confidence that you can do five or ten of most any exercise yeah that's great. I love it. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, all right. Couple more questions that I want to have that I want to ask. All right. Rachel, all time, most points you ever scored in one game. Mm, I think it was around like 32. Mm, yeah. That's pretty impressive. How about you, Lavelle? So uh, probably like mid twenties. I remember uh, AAU tournament. Yeah, we'll round up to twenty five. Now I don't want to make you guys jealous, but I played basketball for three years in high school, and my game high in on a varsity game was nine. <laughs> what, what, what high school did you go to? I went to Tattnall. <laughs> oh yeah, one of my good buddies is an alumni, uh, Jawan Carter. Oh, he, sure. Yeah. A good friend of mine. Yeah. 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 He, he would, uh, my team was pretty decent. I was the point guard. I basically passed the ball to the guys that could shoot and I played defense. 
I played a, an entire game and in overtime without coming out, and I scored one point in that game. So I'm a I'm a prolific scorer, as they it, say. It sounds like you're a three and D O G. That's all. Yeah, I'm exactly. <laughs> I'm mo- mostly just the D. Um, <laughs> Uh, well, the final question I, I want to ask you guys, and uh, uh, this is an awesome conversation. I really enjoyed it. What do you see as the future of 3D? Where would you like it to be, you know, say if you looked out, say, five years from now? Uh, Rachel, go first. Yeah, so for us, I think we just want to continue to spread our philosophy on putting injury prevention at the forefront of training versus yeah. kind of like, you know, bottom of the list. So we're really passionate about that. Um, I think we just want to impact as many kids in the Delaware area as we can. So, you know, we'll, we'll see where things go, but um, where we are now, we feel, we feel really good um, continuing to partner with different schools and things of that nature. Um, And yeah, just building from there. I mean, we love what we're doing. We want to spread the word as much as possible. Um, And yeah, Lavelle, I'll pass it over to you if you have anything to add there. Yeah, so uh, right now we have a really nice uh, location and, you know, three to five years, we would love to have two to three different locations. Being a Delaware alumni, uh, I feel like, you know, part of my duty is to help the next brand of athletes coming through Delaware. And we have a very unique style of training. It's a much more college program. After coming back from overseas, I spent time at Temple University and University of Delaware and other schools working with, you know, Division I players. So we bring that same thought process to here. We have them all have their workout sheets. We track the numbers, the goals. So I just want the the brand Delaware basketball, well, not just basketball, but the Delaware athletes to just be a higher caliber. And I I really want kids to play without the fear of Achilles or what have you because their body is prepared for what they needed to do. I think it's an amazing take on strength and conditioning because if you aren't hurt, you can play a lot longer and a lot safer and a lot more confident like we talked about before. I think that's a great, great strategy for you guys. Love it. Well, if if people want to learn a little bit more about 3 d where do they go? Yeah, yeah so, so it's a uh, go Rachel. They can definitely check us out. We have Instagram, so it's 3 and, and D Sports Performance. Um, We post a lot of just free information, instructional videos. Um, You check out some of the different people that we work with. Um, So it's definitely a great resource if people are interested in just learning some of the basics. We also have our website, 3andsportsperformance.com. That's another way to reach us. Um, And we're also planning to start up a sports-specific speed and agility clinic on May 23rd, so closer to the end of the month, which will be a week program for middle school all the way on up. We have high schoolers, we'll have some college kids, and some overseas guys that come back and train with us as well. That's great. I love it. Awesome. Um, Okay, great. More importantly, when do you guys get married? Once the business looking... becomes a little more autonomous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just a little hard to step away for, for both of you guys to step away for a period of time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we have a couple other coaches that are there. So it's, it's, it's coming along. But ideally, next spring will, will be a, a great goal of ours. So, you know, it's like we tell the kids that, that that's the goal. <laughs> yep, exactly. All right. Well, if you want to connect with me on the untapped app, so you can see these beers that I've been drinking, my username is brcarney7. To learn more about how our firm helps business owners with their financial planning, visit riversedgeadvisors.com. And to hear past episodes of the podcast, go to happy-half-hour.com. All right. So I got to rate this beer. Yeah, I didn't love it. I'm going to give it a two out of five. I probably wouldn't have it again. Um, But, you know, to each his own. Well, So guys, I really appreciate your time. Awesome to see the success you guys are having. And I really appreciate you coming on. Cheers to you. Cheers back at you. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. This is awesome. Thank you for listening to Happy Hip Hour with an Entrepreneur, sponsored by Rivers Edge Advisors. For more information on how Rivers Edge Advisors can help you, visit their website at riversedgeadvisors.com. If you'd like to connect with Brian Carney for business advice, 
or just to share a beer, follow him on Instagram at riversedgeadvisors underscore LLC.